Hello everyone and welcome to another program of Study the Word. This is brought to you every week by the River Ridge Church of Christ that meets at 5600 Van Road in Newburgh, Indiana. We're glad you've taken time out of your busy day to be with us and in a moment we will deal with another Bible question. That's what we do every week and if you have a Bible question we'd love to hear from you. We'll use it on our program like we did with last week's program and many of our other programs when viewers want a Bible question. We always tell people um, when they have a Bible question that chances are it's on the minds of other people. And so a lady sent in her question and we gave a Bible answer. And so in a moment when we deal with that question you're going to be noticing while you're watching the program today um, a number of different offers come up at the bottom of your screen. Feel free to take advantage of those. Note that phone number. Keep that handy. And you'll also see our website. And our website is such a useful tool, especially if you want to know our times of services, directions to our building, and uh, of course you can watch our services live as we stream them over our website. Okay, let's get into our Bible study today. Um, and what we're going to be talking about is trying to clear up some confusion that people have had. Um, just recently in a Bible study that we were having with a lady, we, um, my wife and I noticed that she, was, she had a Bible that was the King James Version. Nothing wrong with the King James Version. Um, it's a good Bible. I actually study of the New King James. Some people have the New American Standard. But there's something that we just need to be aware of. Uh, when you're studying from the, the King James Version, for example. She was reading a verse here, well, we were reading a verse, in Acts chapter 2 and verse 27, and here's what it reads. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Now this was a passage that was making reference to Jesus Christ, and of course that he, was, um, that he died. But the point is, when Jesus died, did Jesus go to hell? I mean, that passage says that Jesus went there. Um, it must be because that's what it says in the Bible. Well, this is why we have to be careful and handle the Word of God properly. Now, before I go ahead and answer that, I want to share with you a, another passage of Scripture that's found over in the book of Luke that I'm sure you're familiar with when, when Jesus was hanging on the cross and when he was you know, being crucified, he was crucified between two thieves. And while he was on the cross, you had one of the thieves there that was was uh, blaspheming him and basically basically saying, "If if you're if you're the Christ, get us down from here." But I want us to notice the other thief who rebuked that thief while they were both all three of them were being crucified. But it says here in verse forty, he rebuked him. The one thief who said, if you're the Christ, get us down from here. The other thief says, do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? I'm reading from Luke 23 and verse 41 now. And we indeed justly, we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come in your kingdom. Now notice what Jesus says in verse 43. Jesus said to him, assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Well, here's this person wanting to escape eternal condemnation. And Jesus turns to him and says, Today you're going to be with me in paradise. Well, wait a minute. In Acts chapter 2, in verse 27, that we read out of the King James Version, said that he was going to go to hell. So is Jesus telling this person who says, You know, please remember me, Lord, when you come in your kingdom. And he said, Today you're going to be with me in hell? No. He said, today you're going to be with me in paradise. The prince says, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused now. What's he talking about there in Acts chapter 2 then? Because obviously, in the Luke passage, he was promising that thief something good. I mean, you don't associate paradise with something bad. Well, this can all be cleared up rather quickly, folks, and that's why we need to be students of the Word. Now, how do you clear this up? Well, we need to know that over there in Acts chapter 2, with the King James Version, they actually put the wrong word in there. 
that word hell there really should use, or it really should be the word Hades. Jesus' soul was not left in Hades. The uh, thief on the cross went to Hades also. It's referred to as paradise. Is all of Hades paradise? No, not all of Hades is paradise. Part of Hades is paradise. So you check, well now you're really confusing me. Well, let's clear it all up. And how we clear it up is we go to the book of Luke. We're going to go to the 16th chapter. And this is actually going to answer a bunch of questions. We want to know, Chuck, what happens as soon as I die? Will I be um, aware of different things when I leave this world? Uh, where will my soul go? Do I immediately go to heaven when I die? Is judgment day as soon as I take my last breath? What actually trans transpires? Well, this passage here in Luke 16 clears up a lot of those confusions and answers a lot of questions. So in Luke chapter 16, Jesus is doing the talking here. And he says in verse 19, he's going to tell them a true story. Not a parable, he's telling them a story. To tell people what happens after death. Okay, We know it's a true story because he even identifies one of the individuals by name. In parables, he would often talk about, you know, a man had two sons, and he doesn't give them names. But in this, he names this poor man. So let me begin reading in verse 19 of Luke chapter 16. Jesus said, There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. He ate very well. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received good things and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you there's a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. Then he said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. What a great story. And remember that if you have a chance to read it on your own. It's Luke chapter 16 verses 19 through verse 31. So what does this story tell us? Well it tells us that when people die they go to Hades. Jesus went to Hades. His soul was not left in Hades. Now what part of Hades? Are, or are there parts to Hades? Well, this story kind of helps us see it. Now, folks, if I had a, a whiteboard behind me, what I would basically do, and I'm not saying it's a circle, but it kind of gives you an idea, but if you were to draw a circle, and then right in the middle of it, draw a line through the center of it. Why? Because what you have is part of that Hadean realm was a place of pain and torment. And the other part of this place is a place of comfort, as we read in this story. It said that the uh, rich man went to Hades. But even in Hades, he looked across and he saw the poor man, Lazarus. And he also saw Abraham. 
Now, did he see other people? Other souls? The Bible doesn't say. But Jesus is making the point, and, and don't lose sight of that. Jesus is telling them that these two people died, and their souls went to Hades. And the one man, the rich man, who didn't follow the Lord, was now being um, punished. He was suffering. But he was in Hades. He looked across and he saw Lazarus and he told Abraham, Can you tell Lazarus, please dip his finger in water, the tip of his finger, and come and cool my tongue, for I'm tormented in this flame. What does that tell you? Well, in this bad part of Hades, it's a place of suffering. And this guy just wanted some relief and he wasn't going to get it. Abraham said, No. Besides, there's a great gulf fix between. So those on one side can't get to the other and those on that side can't come up there either. You just can't. It's fixed is the point. And that's the point Jesus was trying to make. When you die, if you're not right with the Lord, it's too late. And if you die and you're faithful to the Lord, you're not going to miss heaven. As of right now, you're going to be in Hades. Okay? Now, what else do you learn from this? Well, people want to know, well, what happens when I die? Well, when you die, you're going to be just like the rich man or the poor man. You're going to go to the place of comfort. It's described as Abraham's bosom. Also, Jesus described it as a place of paradise. Remember, today you'll be with me in paradise. Acts 2.27, Jesus' soul was not left in Hades. Well, where would Jesus, Jesus wasn't going to the place of suffering. Jesus never sinned. Now, he paid the penalty for sin, but remember, Jesus was not a sinner. That's why he could pay the price. He was guiltless. He was sinless. So what else do we know about what happens after death? Well, we also realize not only is there a consciousness and there's, there's the feeling of pain and suffering like that rich man, but there's also that feeling of comfort. That's what Abraham said to the rich man. He said, Lazarus has now comforted. I also learn that this rich man was still conscious of the fact that he had family. He even said to Abraham, please send Lazarus back from the dead. Why? Because he wanted him to go to his father's house. He says, I have five brothers. I want Lazarus to go to them to try to get them to repent because he says, I don't want them to end up here. Okay? I don't want them to end up here. Abraham says, no, no, no. Lazarus it's not going to go back. They have Moses and the prophets. They have the same thing that, that Lazarus had access to when he was alive. Remember, Lazarus isn't being comforted. He didn't escape the, the, the pain and the suffering because he was poor. It was because he was godly. And that's a lesson you need to remember. And so, what we're noticing here is that there is this Hadean realm. And people want to know, well, Chuck, well, where does heaven and hell come into play then? When, when does that all happen? Well, that all happens at Judgment Day. We're either going to go to heaven or we're going to go to hell. But that's after Judgment Day. Before Judgment Day, and if you die, you go to Hades. And you're either going to be, face comfort or you're going to face torment. Now we know this is true because it harmonizes with some other passages. For example, we can go over to the book of John. John chapter 5. It says this in verse 28. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Now wait a second. Here it is, Jesus talking again. He said, there's going to come a time when they will rise. Well, we know what happens to our bodies. You know, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Um, Ecclesiastes, it tells us about that. Now, my point I'm trying to get across here, folks, is that when he talks about being resurrected, he's not talking about the physical body, he's talking about the soul. And where, where are the souls of those who have died? Are they literally in the grave? Well, he's using that as an example. But they're going to rise from where? 
Well, we know where everybody is. They're in the, they're in the Hadean realm. They're in, they're in the place of comfort or they are in the place of torment. Now that's important to keep in mind because remember, when you die, it's not like you're going to go to heaven and then go to hell because that wouldn't make any sense right here. Jesus said there'll come a time when all those who are in the grave will rise. All of them. Well, what do you mean rise? I mean, isn't everybody already in heaven or everybody already in hell? Now, if you're going to rise, maybe he's just talking about all those that are in, in hell that are going to rise. No, that's not what he said. Because he said right here, he said, those who have done good to the resurrection of life are also going to rise. Well, aren't they already in heaven? No, that's the point. They're not in heaven yet. Now, I... Now, I know a lot of people try to find comfort when a loved one who, let's say, is faithful to the Lord, and they'll say, well, he's in heaven now. Well, he's actually not, or she's not in heaven. But that doesn't take anything away. I mean, if they're in, that, if they're in the paradise, if they're in the place of comfort, that's wonderful. They're only there until judgment day. That's what Jesus was talking about in John chapter 5. There's going to come a time when they will rise there's more said on this over in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Paul had to deal with this because in this case you had a, a church at Thessalonica. You had Christians who were feeling bad. They were full of sorrow when a brother or sister in the Lord died. They felt that if they're not alive when Jesus comes back, they're going to miss heaven. You see... They were wrong on a couple of points. And, and remember, that even they're not thinking that when you die, you go to heaven. Because if you died and you went to heaven, they wouldn't be worried about it. But actually, they thought you had to be alive when Jesus came back in order to go to heaven. And listen to what Jesus says here. I'm not, well, I guess in a, in a sense, Jesus, but um, Paul being inspired through revelation of Jesus Christ. We know that. Remember, Paul said, I speak by revelation of Jesus Christ in Galatians chapter 1 and in verse 12. So here it is, Paul writing to the church at Thessalonica, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and here's what he says in verse 13. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For... If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the shout of the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first, and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet them in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. There it is. It puts all the pieces together now. We can get a clear view of what is going to transpire on Judgment Day. Yeah, there's going to be a day, a Judgment Day. I want to talk more about this passage in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, but let me just throw one more passage into the mix to help, you know, put it all together as we paint this picture. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, he says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. All right, let's put it all together here so you have no problem understanding what's going to transpire at the end of time or what's going to happen if you die before 
the end of time. So what happens is, when you die, you go to Hades. We've read that. The rich man, Lazarus, Jesus, everybody that died, Abraham was there. Everybody that has ever lived and will ever live until Jesus comes back, those who die go to Hades. Now that Hadean realm has a place of comfort and a place of torment. That will be instant. We need to be aware of that. He told the brethren in Thessalonica, don't cry over those who died in the Lord. They're not going to miss anything. He said, the dead will rise first. And then he said, we that are alive, okay, will rise and meet them in the air. So those in Hades will rise, and we which were alive will rise and meet them in the air. What do you call that? That's going to be judgment day. That's what he's talking about over in 2 Peter chapter 3. The Lord's not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but his long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but the Lord is going to come like a thief in the night, and we need to be prepared for that. Did you also notice what's going to happen when the dead rise, and we which are alive rise and meet the Lord in the air? Peter said, the earth and all its works will all be burned up. Why? It will have served its purpose. There's nobody here. You know, when you understand about Hades, and you understand about Judgment Day, and the final destination of heaven and hell, when you understand all that, you're going to clear up a lot of the problems that are out there in the false teaching department, as far as rapture. You know, they have Jesus coming and going and coming and going. No, no, no. It's not like Jesus is going to come and just take the righteous away, and then come back after seven years, and then reign on earth, and no, then go back, and then there's going to be a judgment day. No, the, the Bible doesn't even teach that stuff. Very clearly, that we read here, there is a day, an hour, they need to be prepared. That's what Jesus was talking about when he was talking about the rich man and Lazarus. You need to be ready. Say, well, Jesus hasn't come back yet. Remember those in Second Peter 3? They were, they were scoffers who were saying, where's the promise of his coming? Well, you know what? Even if Jesus doesn't come for another thousand years, or 10,000 years, even if the point is you're not living a thousand years, or 10,000 years, physically, and you don't know how long you have, you need to be prepared for what lies beyond the grave. And beyond a shadow of a doubt, what lies beyond the grave are two things. Hades and Judgment Day. That's what's happening. You will go to the place of comfort or the place of torment immediately after you die, depending on whether you are faithful or unfaithful. The rich man was unfaithful. The poor man, Lazarus, was faithful. And you see the contrast that is there. When you die in the Lord, there's comfort. That's what he was trying to do to, with, with the Thessalonica brethren. Trying to comfort them. He didn't want them to have sorrow. That's why he concluded that passage in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 by saying, comfort one another with these words. And so when I have a brother or sister in the Lord that dies, there's joy. There's sadness that I don't see them anymore. We're separated for a time. But there's comfort of knowing that they're in paradise. They're with Abraham. They're with, the, with Lazarus and all those that have been faithful to the Lord. There's the comfort. And then we want to remain faithful so that someday we can be reunited and we are ready for Judgment Day when it does come. And so that's how you need to clear up these things. Jesus did not go to hell. But if people want to say that, well, hell is just another word for Hades, well, then they say, oh, okay, well, then he did. But not hell as far as Gehenna, fire. That's the ultimate. You know, the Bible uses the word hell to describe judgment day, whether you go to heaven and when you go to hell. And obviously those that are suffering in the Hadean realm are lost and that can never be changed that's why we have to prepare while we're still alive and we want you to be prepared you're never too young it's never too late as long as you still have breath in your lungs 
if you need to make sure you say Chuck I don't know if I'm ready I want to be prepared well you need to be fully persuaded you need to know you don't want to go through life with doubt but you can remove all doubt would you like a study we'll sit down face to face and we'll just it won't take long as we go through the scriptures to find out whether we whether you are ready and and you can get it taken care of you want to be ready for what lies beyond the grave so if you'd like a face-to-face -face Bible study call us I'll call you back we'll set up a time that fits in your schedule you can take our free six lesson Bible study course that we offer you work at it at your own speed in the comfort of your own home that's kinda cool Chris says Chuck what if I start that correspondence course and I get into like lesson number two or three and I don't want to finish it well you don't send back your lesson no pressure but we want to encourage you to open up your Bibles at home and study to learn and while you're studying you have to be like other students they'll they'll have questions while they're studying and they write those questions in and we help answer them too we always say that Bible questions deserve Bible answers and we want you to be a student of God's Word and clear up the misunderstandings that are out there because knowledge is power. The less you know, the more vulnerable you are. And that's why Paul would warn about that over in Ephesians chapter 4 and in verse 14. Don't be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. When you know what the truth is, then you'll know what error is and you'll stand against it. That's the cool part about it. It's the only way. And that was last week's program. Of can you actually know what the truth is? Any of our programs that you've missed in the past that you've heard about, if you'd like a, a, a free DVD copy of those programs, just let us know. We'll send them to you. Please don't forget we offer our weekly bulletin. Um, you can be put on the mailing list and get that mailed to your home at no cost. Our weekly radio program that airs live every Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock on 98.5 FM. And you can call up and your questions there and get an answer immediately. Now you can submit them to here and I can do them on the TV program but we tape them a week ahead of time so you'll have to wait a little bit longer that way. So don't forget the radio program. Don't forget our website www.riverridgechurch.org and you can watch our services live streamed over the internet uh, so you can kind of see what we do before you even come out and visit with us. We'd love to have you come. We meet every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock for a Bible study. 10 o'clock for worship and then Sunday afternoons at 4 once again for worship and we have a midweek Bible study every Wednesday and we have classes for, for the children for all age groups bring the whole family we'd love to have you don't forget it's not too late call in a question email a question we'll use it on this program and I want to encourage you to always be students of the word this has been brought to you by the River Ridge Church of Christ that meets at 5600 Van Road in Newburgh Thank you for watching and have yourselves a great day.